Hello, welcome to a new terrain guide. In this we're going to be making some dungeon tiles. Uh, these are going to be based on Wylock's uh, locking tiles. I'll leave a link in the description. Um, the basic guide I'll cover, but it's better to go and watch his because he does it in much more detail. He explains like the sizes and dimensions and so forth, for why we're making it an inch and a quarter squares rather than an inch. Um, so yeah, go and watch that and then come back here and watch this because what I do is I take his basic premise because he uses cardboard and I use uh, foam and do a bit more detail to make it look a bit more cavern-y uh, than what he does. Nothing wrong with him. What he does in fact is brilliant, uh, but I just want to take it to the next level. Uh, these are going to be specifically used for the Lost Mine of Fandelver. Um, this video itself is going to cover the tiles to make the uh, crag core Crag Claw hideout. Um, <clears throat> um, I've gonna. I've got a. Uh, the first step I wanted to do is sort of take this and turn it into grids because it's not very. You know, it's very organic. Whereas using grid dungeon tiles are not that like organic. That's a massive drawback to them. So the first thing I did was to sort of map out um, what it looks like, and so I thought we'd just have a quick. So yeah, what I've done here is I've drawn out little grids here and there and I've sort of worked out what sort of tiles I'll need. Uh, I'm not going to need some river tiles. Uh, it needs some corner tiles, some just plain flat tiles, some wall tiles. I'm going to need some single tunnel tiles and a water tile. So that's basically my plan here and I sort of worked out top here how many tiles I'm going to need to make uh, for this. The other numbers here are for just working out other things uh, and then sort of worked out I'm gonna go for a corner I'm just gonna go corner to corner and sort of make it look a bit rough a bit straight uh, the basic tile itself is made from a uh, chipboard uh, there'll be a link in the description where you can pick this up it's free mill chipboard uh, this is what Wylock uses as well turned me on to it and I'm kind of love this stuff now uh, so this is what it looks like Let's get on with making the tiles. On the um, the hardboard chipboard, measure a strip that is two and a half inches, and cut that out. When cutting it out, you're probably going to have to do it in two or three passes. Keep going down with the knife and try and keep the blade as straight as possible. Next, measure two and a half inches across the, uh, the width of it and this will give you two and a half inch squares. Uh, put these to one side. What you want to do now is measure three quarters of an inch strip and you're going to cut that into uh, three quarter inch squares. When you cut these out you can just use scissors just to save a bit of time. Let's come on. You will also need some one inch by one inch squares. Next up glue four of the three quarter inch squares into each corner. Uh, you have to work quite quick here because this is a very porous material and will soak the glue up. So once they're in roughly in place, you kind of use your desk to push them down just to make sure they're in the corner and there's no overhang and they're drying already. You can even use something like just a spin it around and push it into the corner. You don't want any overhang onto them. Like so. Take one of the uh, one inch squares and you're just going to glue it into the center here. Out of the uh, six mil foam, cut some squares that are two inches, two and a half inches by two and a half inches. Apply little blobs of glue on the five squares. 
uh, if you are working in batches only do batches of four because the, both of these materials are quite porous so chipboard soaking in already and as soon as you add this to the foam it will soak in as well so you just want to squidge it on I'm going to do it in blobs to let air get to the PVA so it can dry just put it on oh. uh, yeah, that'll do. and then just what you want to do is try and line them up so the hardboard meets there's going to be places where I'm not very good at cutting foam to be honest where it's not that's a bad yeah well, it's not totally straight here unfortunately I've, I've got to get better at cutting foam but you're just kind of lining them up with each other so they know which way you put them on they sort of join up if there is a really not too bad if there is a really bad bit where one just has too much of a gap we we can have that as the outer edge but yeah you just put these on so they're all lined up and then maybe uh, just put a bit of weight on them and let them dry it's now glued on so what we're going to do is add a cavern floor uh, pattern on here what we're going to do is measure in one and a quarter inches on each edge we're not going to draw lines as such this just to help us you've got to mentally imagine the lines are there and just going to come in and draw some some blocks keeping each sort of block area within its own square to make it look a bit more natural it's going to come in like so So you can see what we've got here is so I clearly see a line down here, but without really so it look, makes it look a bit natural. Then just using a uh, sort of sculpting tool. If you don't have one, just use a ballpoint pen. You can just just go over the pencil line and score into it. And the next stage is we want to push all this stuff that's not a rock down so we just got this sculpting tool which has a sort of flat end here so you're just gonna go come through and we're just gonna, gonna push it down go through and on the edges just carefully push down all the edges because there can be times when you push too hard and you go all the way down you don't want that so so we come through and just flatten all the all all the inner bits. And you end up with something like that. Uh got a few more already, so you can sort of see. And they go together, you can sort of clearly see squares without them looking like there's straight lines in there. So I've just got, got, got just a load more to do now. A load more. And then there's these still all to, to do. Okay, so now we're going to make the uh, walls. Um, it's going to be made from 10 mil foam and what you're going to do is measure a quarter of an inch sort of down here go along two and a half inches and then measure a quarter of an inch here now the secret to this is in between these two bits here it doesn't matter <coughs> what shape it is as long as you come back and always meet at this quarter inch point so for a wall we're just gonna do something like that so it doesn't matter what it is it gives it a nice sort of cavern wall effect as long as we meet up there now for a corner come down here two and a half it'll be something quite similar we're gonna come down and 
get a set square on that point there. Measure down. Because what we want to do is come in two and a half inches here and come in a quarter of an inch. Like so. Again, the rules sort of apply. We can do anything we want here. We can make it quite a big curve or as long as yeah, we can do whatever we want. As long as we sort of meet up at that point here. Roughly sort of draw a shape. And then to cut it out, use a rule to cut this back bit here because we want this to be as flat as possible. A rule for this line here. And a rule for this one. For these bits here, the in-between bits, what you want to do is get more hacky with it. Rather than cutting it, you want to push through and hack. So this will give it a nice rough texture on the walls, which we can add to once so we've got them cut out. So we come in the bits that are meant to be smooth and flush. Go through with a ruler and do it nice, and you've got your wall. A bit of wastage. Got your wall there, and because you've made them be a quarter of an inch at the end, so they all should meet up nicely. So put those there. Might not stick on as well, but hopefully you can get the uh, general picture. All we're going to do now. Is get some glue and actually stick these in place. Before you glue it in, come in with a bit of a knife and just cut little bits out just to give it a rougher, more natural, uneven surface, like so. And next up, grab your tile. Um, what you want to do is pick one perhaps you haven't cut as straight as what you'd like, sort of not as flush as what you like. Put it up against something like this so you can rest again so you get a nice right angle piece. And what you're going to do is just come in, put some glue on the bottom, put it roughly in place, and then butt it up against this, making sure it's on the edge. So it's flush on the edges, It'll right angle at the back here like this, and just leave this to dry. It's much the same for the corner pieces, except you have two sides to worry about to make flush. Two sort of unique tiles that I'm gonna make that just don't really conform. So one's this little mini cave section. So again, all it's gotta do is conform to the fact that it's a half inch either side, and then well, it's pants, I'm gonna cut that out in a minute. And now the other one is what I want is for tiles to come down to a single tile here, so it'll be these where these are two, there'll be a single ones here, but it'll still have the edges. So what I'm gonna have is a transition piece. So it starts again conforming to its quarter inch, this is both sides. And what I've done is I've measured so from the center and worked out how wide this bit needs to be. So this bit here will be an inch and a quarter, so it'll be effectively a single tile. So all it's gonna be is a case of coming through, chopping these out, I'll hopefully doing this on camera, hopefully I can get it done quick enough, and I'll rough it up a bit more. So then these will go here like so, and then the single tiles, which we'll get to in a minute, will be this width here. The single tiles are made in much the same way, um, except for the gap at the start and finish here is an inch and a quarter, and you have a transitional tile that goes from one to the other, kind of comes down, goes to one to the other. And for those, I've got straight corner, again, made in such the same way as the others, just just so it's an inch and a quarter here, inch and a quarter there, and a T-junction, which is 
combination of all of them so you have something like that. To make the uh, straight river sections, uh, take a bit of foam, uh, it's two and a half inches long, but only a inch and a quarter, and you're going to stick that there. And a bit of the uh, chipboard that is the same size, and you're just going to stick that on the opposite side. And then when it's dry, put your pattern in here, and then we'll come back to put the river in. To make the uh, river bend, uh, you want to come in an inch and a quarter from here and here, and just draw a sort of bend like that. And then on the back bit here, just draw around like that, and cut cut these two bits out and glue these in place but keep this bit as a template because we can use this to draw around the chipboard so here's the bit we've cut out put it on the chipboard draw around it trace around it and then just cut this shape out I'm probably going to cut this out with scissors rather than a knife just think it would be easier and here's all the bits already so you have two uh, floors and this will be the river that will do the same as the others uh, once I've glued it in place, I might need to do a bit of trimming at the end here where I've cut it quite correct. I'm going to glue it in place first. So I'm going to glue that there, that there. And this bit here, like so. The lake is, looking at my uh, plan, is going to be five tiles. Now I can see from the plan, two of them, this one here and this one here, are going to be just full water. So for those, a uh, two squares, two and a half by two and a half, just going to get glued there. Now the other's going to be have a bit of floor on them, so I'm going to just put some loose tiles here. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is this one's going to be, I'll just mark it here, it'll be an inch and a quarter to join in, and it's going to come down and I'm going to do like that. Just a, and so we'll cut this bit out, glue this bit on, and we'll use this as a template for cutting some card out. Well, this one's gonna be likewise. I'm gonna come like this, like so, like. And then what would happen is you'd. Place a towel there like that, that'll be water. Towel here, that'll be sort of like towel there going to there. Here's all the pieces cut out, got to glue them in. Uh, one thing I should note is all the off cuts you got, these for these bits and for the river. Keep these to one side because we're going to be using these later on to draw, because we're going to make a, the water out of sea fall. And so you're going to use these as a template to draw and cut those bits out. It will make sense in the next few steps. And the sort of basic tile is almost finished now. All we've got to do is just add some gravel and sand along here. So for that, I'm going to grab some glue. And just run a bead along, along the edge here. And just take a... old pet brush, I always have one that I use for glue, and just going to work it into the, the edge here, keeping it not doing it up the walls too much. So something like, like that, and then just take some uh, modeling sand. Um, did a video about what I use for this a few months back, and just sprinkle it on, shake off the excess, And there you go, just put that to one, one side and allow it to dry. All that's left to do now is to paint and to begin with, I'm going to undercoat in uh, black. And what I've got here is some black paint that's watered down and I'm going to add some Mod Podge to it just to seal it. Uh, interesting fact, I had a video on this on the channel because I thought it was a really cool idea, really not nifty original idea. I've removed it since because I started getting comments saying you do realise that someone else has done this. Uh, guy called Black Magic Craft at the time I hadn't heard of and sure enough he had done it way before me 
and so I've removed it because whilst I thought it was an original idea of mine apparently it's not so I've removed it so I'm just going to add some Mod Podge in I need to add more water, more black paint uh, just going to mix it up and we'll see how we go coffee stirrer it's just a case of uh, just painting it get it in and sealing it up which we'll come back to when this is done once the uh, black is dried we're gonna sort of base it using a heavy dry brush using this grey colour here which is uh, storm cloud grey it's kind of like a codex grain Games Workshop terms or Dawnstone, but a bit more with a bit of, I don't know, Carrick Stone mixed in. So we're just going to heavy dry brush that. Then afterwards, what we're going to do is we're going to take this colour here, and this is called Ivory Tusk, and we're just going to do a bit of a lighter dry brush on, on, <coughs> on here. So what I'm going to do is load my brush up and on my board just take a lot of it off. Uh, see if you can see this. Do this again. I'm just gonna take a load off, wipe it all off, and come in and all I want it to do is just come along and pick out those those raised bits. Like so, I think that looks alright. Here's the uh and highlight one and here's the other one you can sort of see the difference it looks brilliant me pleased with that so i'm just gonna get on with the rest gonna now do finish the water off on these bits uh you, there's various different ways you can do this you could either just paint it and varnish it feeling brave you could i don't know resin it but i'm gonna go for a different technique I'm um, going to use something called sea foil, which is something the model railway uses to make use to make well sea. It's a two-part product. The first part is a sheet of sort of coloured paper. In this case, it's blue, represents the sea, and then it's some um, plastic texture roll, the foil. This goes over the top and gives it a nice shine. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is cut a strip down the sea foil that's the same width as the uh, bit we want watered like so and then just cut it to the same uh, width as the tile just glue it on For the foil, uh, similar process. So come in, lay over the top. And just come in with a uh, marker pen, just so you can see where you're going to be cutting. Put a line down, cut it out. Now to glue it on, I'm just going to use some more PVA because it can dry and clear. But you still don't want too much, so you just want blobs really. Little small tiny blobs, just hold it in place. This will dry clear. And with the marker pen you can sort of rub it off now. Put it on, push down, and now you're going to want to put something on to just to weigh it down. Like so, and let that dry. Here's one I had drying for a while. You can see the blobs are now drying clear, not totally dry yet. 
Now, for the special tiles, uh, remember we said to keep the bits of foam we cut out. And well, that's because what we can do is, let's if I do this one first. So what we want to do for these is, that's what we want to trace around in that shape. So you want to do it on this side now. So you just come around, trace around it, and cut that out. Like so. Don't glue it in yet, do a test fit just to make sure it's going to look alright. That's not going to look too bad. And what you're going to want to do is do the same for the uh, foil. Just make sure I've got the right section. So I'm going to come in using your mark pen and again just uh, test to make sure it fits in properly it does and just glue it in now for this it's quite awkward to get something in there for this one but what you can do is you just get some some sort of clamps or something or if you got one of these tools from games workshop just use it to hold it in place Grab it like so. Grab it like so. And just put it somewhere to dry. The clips are made in exactly the same way as Y locks. So you're coming in and measuring in seven eighths of an inch here. Uh, now, rather than an inch, as he says in his video, uh, it's seven eighths to allow for manufacture error and tolerance. So we're just gonna come in, measure down there, and each one's gonna be an inch and a quarter. And just like Wylock, gonna snip the corners off. As well as the tiles, uh, there's also gonna be some use of some other little bits and pieces. Uh, there's two areas that sort of rock slides. The first is in the wolf den, where it's a rock slide going up to a little chimney. I'm not too worried about the chimney necessarily. But we're just going to make these now. Um, I'm going to come in. No idea if I have a hot wire cut still out, but if I don't, so I'm just going to snap that. And I'm just going to sort of do it out of polystyrene. What I'm going to do then, it might be better if I uh, grab the hot wire cutter, but I want it somewhat rough. Anyway, I'm just going to make rough it up and we're going to paint it black. So looking at these I wasn't I undercoated and wasn't very happy with you know it's a bit a bit too un, a bit too even which you know it's a rock fall so it shouldn't be. So I'm just going to add some stones on using a a glue gun just in random places just to make it look like it is actually what it's going to be which is a rock fall. Just so it's getting a bit more uneven before I'm going to undercoat it, and then I'll be adding all different bits of sand and grit in just to get it a bit more rock fully. One of the other features for the first area is a bridge um, that goes over a path. So we're going to make a bridge and when I use it I'll probably put it underneath something just to raise it up a little bit to show that that's where it is. But to make this we're going to make it out of foam core, 4 inches by about an inch wide. And get some strips of balsa wood, uh, what you're going to do is make sure the grain is going that way and make sure it's just 
a bit wider than the balsa wood, like so. Then come in with pencil, draw planks in. Do it freehand because we want it to look a bit rough, a bit, a bit ragged. Like so. And you probably need a few of these. I'm just going to show you with this one. Then come in and I'll take chunks out of it. Just little triangle bits to rough. Like different lamps and so forth, just to make it look like it's not an even piece of balsa wood. <laughs> Next up, we're going to want to uh, glue this onto the front core. Let's get some glue. And glue it on. That's the tiles complete. You can now uh, sort of put them all together to make some sort of a room. It doesn't take that long to do. The beauty of the uh, Wylock system. But I just was never happy with how the caverns were done before, whereas these I like. Uh, yeah, what we can do now is a uh, set up some in being that's what these have meant before some lost mines of uh fandelva type uh boards and see how they go but yeah you can see go together really easy just hold them on the end there and they stay in place so yeah let's have a let's go through the uh lost mines of pandelva fandelva map uh so there might be spoilers so you might want to stop watching now so it's now time to look at everything coming together, all the tiles we made come together. But first of all, this isn't covered in the uh, guide, obviously, but this is the first two sections. Um, and for this, I'm going to use a cat. Um, yeah, for this, I'm going to set it up just using sort of 2D terrain. Uh, the grass grid is from this Pathfinder flip map. Um, and then these river sections are from an old games workshop game called Battle of the Five Armies, sort of based on their War Master rules. Uh, some videos of it on the channel. And these 2D bits, uh, we've got some trees here, sort of representing the uh, hideout here and the cave entrance here, are from playmats.eu. And you can get various different uh, 2D sets. There's a review of this on the channel as well. So we're setting up this area here. Uh, so we've got area one here and area two here. Uh, there's no cat normally in it. That's optional. So now we're moving to inside the actual caves. Uh, so the first area got set up here. What two actually is area three. Uh, this is the kennels. I might use some hero quest doors just to indicate it. Later on video, I might just clip on type thing. And in here we can see uh, this is where the fissure would be. Now it leads to a natural chimney, so can, just to represent that. Uh, climbs up this more really, or the other side here. Get to it to climb up into the chimney. So I might not place this here yet. I kind of imagined it would be climbing up and climbing down, so that's why it's there for. Um, then also set up is area four, which is the steep passage, which is uh, up here. And, it's, uh, and from this point on, which then we need dark vision. Uh, area five is the overpass here, and I'm probably gonna sort of just balance this up on something, uh, just to show that it is up in the air bridge, and we'll carry on going down here. When we uh, cover areas uh, seven, uh, so what I'll do now is I'll set up area six. 
So this is area six, the uh, Goblin Den. Uh, this section here is going to be technically raised up. Um, I'll probably put something underneath it to show it's raised up ever so slightly. Uh, and this is the main area here of area six. But we also have the tunnels leading back to uh, leading back to areas four and five uh, set up as well. So hopefully I can get it all in. I'll just move the camera along. Then got the tunnels here that will take us back to uh, areas four and five here. Um, you can see the bit here where it goes from see, uh, the normal into the single section here. That's how it, that's how area six looks up with leading back to the other areas. So this is area seven, the uh, twin pool caves. You can see the main area here. This will lead, take you to area eight. Just using again this thing from playmats just to uh, lay down to separate the caves, and you can see the uh, river passage here, and then the other entrance that will take you to the bridge goes over area five, like so. Falls down here. So that's how I'd set that up. And this is the final area, area eight. Uh, this is. Uh, Clark's cave so uh, it will be here that will take you back to area 7 here's the sloping floor that goes to the chimney it will take you back to area 3 and this is the main area here and that is how I would set up um, area 1 uh, adventure 1 was it 2? 2 even no 1 goblin arrows uh, or oh no sorry, it's crag claw hideout so this is how I'd set up Cragclaw Hideout um, using the tiles just made. Um, it's not really a one-to-one -one representation of it. It's still like still like more fear to the mind. This is just to help help with that fear to the mind so people can visualize stuff. Uh, so uh, that's what I like doing. Uh, the next section is Fandling, which I wouldn't do. Uh, would set up anything for. I'd get use the Essentials Kit map that comes with it, uh, and to do that. What I'm turning my mind to next is the uh, Red Band Hideout, uh, which will be uh, more nicer than these cavern tiles. There'll be more flagstones. So uh, that's what I'm going to turn my mind to next. So until then, uh, take care, guys. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed it, please do like. And more importantly uh, than that, uh, Leave, let's have a leave some uh, feedback in the in the comments, and I love comments. I love reading comments. Uh, but yeah, anyway, until next time, guys. Take care.